Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Tales of Heroes. This week, in the video replay review, we take a look at the new Point du Hawk. Check it out in its beauty, in its glory. It is amazing. No more 16 fuel points, no more 16 munitions points. Just some great terrain to fight on. We have uh, Bre- Bayer and uh, Nihilist Nietzsche. I don't know. We're just going to call him Double N. Versus Nihilist Nietzsche. Yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with double N, Unholy X and Disgrace X, and uh, this is actually a submitted game uh, by one of our uh, one of our fans, and it was apparently a very organized game. Both se- both sides seem to be on Teamspeak. We're working well together, so we're gonna see how this one plays out. I'm very excited to see how Point Two Hawk itself plays out. So let's take a look at it very quickly. We still have the three same victory locations in the middle of the map there. But most of the points have been reduced in, in fuel or, or munitions cost to plus 5 or plus 10. And you can see, you know, what a huge impact that's going to have on this, on this map. Because in the past, it's been very tank spammy. And, well, because I'm an idiot, I should probably introduce myself and my co-host. I'm Bridger Vittensby. Hi. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah, this was one of my favorite uh, maps to do in M8 Armored Car Rush back in the day. I used to go up in Support Center, start in the northeast allied position, get uh, MG Sniper in the house that's just outside the upper left western, northwestern Axis base, and start mortaring the heck out of their base, uh, and then followed up with Armored Cars. Now that there's no, well, gaz- gajillion of 16 and points all over this map, especially in regards to munitions, which uh, what I would do is just drop a bunch of mines everywhere and, uh, well, pretty much lock them in their base. Um, that strat might not be quite as viable. haven't tested it uh, too much, but uh, this is kind of a long one, so unless you had anything else to say, we can. Uh, I'm ready to get started. All right, let's get it started then. We're at the five-second mark here in the replay, and we are going to be unpausing in five, four, three two, one, unpause. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's find out what each side is about to do. We have a barracks and a potentially another, nope, weapon support center opening on the top allied player and a barracks from the south. And we have, uh, I assume, standard openings over here. Uh, Are we having three pioneers, two pioneers? How many pioneers on the Axis side? Looks like we just have a standard one extra pioneer start. There's a lot of points to cap on this map, so as allies, at least one player should go rifleman. And uh, it's a pretty friendly MG map. There's a little bit of a, there's a lot of, well, not a lot, but there's some houses in key locations. For instance, that church that overlooks the middle victory point. Um, also, the little house by the other victory point. Again, there was that house that I mentioned that's right outside the Axis base in the north. And of course, a uh, unique feature to this map is that you have the two bunkers all the way down um, south, just at the kind of, I guess, peninsula, I would call it. Um, so th- this is also a pretty good MG map uh, as well. So I can full wholeheartedly agree with the weapon support center being included included in in, uh, in in the start for the allies. Now this is interesting. You see here we've got uh, a couple of uh, very important strat points. It seems on the Axis side. Uh, well, sorry, not not on the Axis side. Uh, just the two strat points here. The middle strat point on the Allied side there, next to the MG, and another strat point that controls uh, the main road there which helps connect the axis to a lot of the allied side of the road which they decided was key early and uh, we've got one of these buildings garrisoned a machine gun two machine guns one headed to each building but lots of allies here this is gonna be oh no he set up outside the building with no cover but he's got lots of riflemen there this is gonna be a tough battle no access. Oh, no, there's another machine gun coming in. This is going to be a very interesting battle here as the other machine gun tries to get into position. Two machine guns in this house is going to be very difficult. That machine gun setting up in the open, I think, was a big mistake there, Vittensby. He just basically, you know, was asking for, you know, to be targeted and, you know, wiped out if he's just sitting there in the open with a the machine gun. 
Yeah, exactly. I'm not entirely sure why he didn't just stick that machine gun inside of the building, but, um, let's see. It's that, that Disgrace X has just put his machine gun in. Uh, yeah. Certainly it has a line of fire, and also it gives, provides better cover than uh, the wood-based building. So I'm not entirely entirely sure that, that was a smart choice, just like you're kind of <clears throat> noting. But I did notice something that is different other than the resource point changes. I believe I'm almost 100% sure that that strat point that's right by the North Victory Point on the left used to connect the entire middle road. And now it seems that, that uh, the point that the, the plus five fuel that the Volk... Volk squad is is uh, decapping. That actually um, connects to the south. Do you see what I'm talking about? Am I wrong? Am I? Just Do you mean the? This up? Um, if you look at the, the the tactical map, the munitions point on the bottom, the plus right. ten controls a big chunk of the road, and the strat point <laughs> controls another chunk. Um, I think that's similar to how it used to be, but I I can't remember exactly because I didn't I didn't play this map very often, so yeah, I, I can't that quite remember. I think that that strap point that was right next to the North Victory Point used to cover the entire road. I don't know uh, why there's two strap points on that road now. That far, far strap point. That seems kind of weird to put there. It, which one? You mean to the upper right of the Extreme point? top north. There's a strap point at the very top. Yeah, that is kind of weird. I'm not. Uh, yeah, I think they really redid the middle road on this. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of new things, I guess, that uh, not too many people have paid all that much attention to, I guess, because I didn't see that as one of the th changes on the forums, and certainly now that I look at it and remember some of the good old days when I used to do my little build on this, um, yeah, certain things have changed, but uh, it seems that the Axis do tend to have, I mean, are having a small advantage right now, their MG positions are pretty solid, Yeah. and uh, I mean, they have three machine guns there, although Sniper is, is doing a good job, just got pinned actually, nice, wow, <laughs> but uh, it seems that the, that the Axis and al Allies have a little bit of a resource advantage, just a little bit though. Yeah, the the machine guns and the axes are just locking down this map very well. Putting those two in that in those buildings there. Actually, now that guarding that strap point, that really limits the allies' ability to to move out of their base. You know, they have to go in a specific direction, which means the axes can know where they're going from there too. And uh, controlling that middle strap point um, on the allied side really hurts the allies. They can't push in for that plus five fuel. It's not going to connect. For example, we've got some interesting engineer versus pioneer battling going on down on the beach. Pioneers uh, desperately trying to take out those engies. It's going to work, too. If you Lots of battle the, going on in the middle. If you look at the wreck just right next to where that uh, engineer-pioneer battle was back in the day, that used to be salvageable, unfortunately. So <laughs> I'm really happy that they changed in, in uh, 1.6 that no longer these wrecks are, are salvageable, especially on Montherm. It was just a little ridiculous. But um, the alley player set up a heavy machine gun inside of... Uh, the bunker just to the on the uh, peninsula, which I had, had mentioned, and that's a, a nice place to cover the the victory point as well as the approach to your to your fuel. Um, yeah. But we have uh, you know rifle spam from the southern player and weapon support from the uh, northern player. Oh, axis sniper this time. I don't know. Uh, he's sniping guys back at the HQ. Wow. This guy's got one reinforcement. If the sniper can take him out, I think it was sniping that guy back there. Yeah, we have dual Krieg barracks going up. Uh, that's kind of interesting. And Point Two Hawk used to be definitely a, a pure tank map. Um, people, you'd, I mean, you could see easily tons of Panthers come out on uh, this particular map. Uh, I'm not sure why both of them are going uh, for Krieg Barracks. Um, that, that would uh, make me think that they're probably not going Blitz. Um, so maybe we'll see Terror or Defensive in this replay. Actually, I happen to know it's a Double Terror. Nice. Double well, Terror versus uh, Airborne Armor, I want to say. The classic allied combo. <laughs> yeah, Airborne and Armor. pretty much. And we got. Uh, I mean, what are you going to do? Infantry company? <laughs> uh, but wow. Bars, probably not the greatest thing to go against mass engineers. But now we do have Volks with. Uh, I mean, MGs. M yeah. M I'm sorry, yeah, mass. Did I say engineers? <laughs> yeah. MGs, yeah. <laughs> MGs, NGs, you know. 
<laughs> but uh, we do have volts with MP40s here that probably would have would be in a very good position to crush the allies without those bars. So that's actually not too bad an upgrade in, in considering the current circumstances. Now that I'm looking at it. Yeah. And we have uh, two mortars uh, being placed just behind this stone wall by the Allied base. That's uh, it's a dangerous situation to be in when there's mortars around uh, yeah. any day. And like, we've got an HQ set up. Set up. It's firing at an HQ. HQ, right? And they're they're building a mortar uh, there as well. They also have a Axis sniper floating around in the middle, um, right there, uh, just below. Well, just to the right of the strap point. Uh, one thing that was kind of Dis disheartening. I, I don't want to go that far, but uh, that that plus five munitions point, which is directly outside the northern Allied base, wasn't capped, and uh, that that's not a lot of munitions, but you know that's forty munitions right there. So it's an AP rounds. That's a bar suppression. Um, that 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 should have been capped, even though yeah, he did go weapon support center. But uh, so we have a tank depot going up. That's a pretty quick tech. Reminds me of the old days, you know, Operation Nine Minute Sherman or something. Yeah, right. Like that. Yeah. So, here might be the reason for these Kriegs barracks because you know what? I hear we have a double Flemenwerfer rush, base rush, coming up. <laughs> Thanks Swear for to God. For me. <laughs> this is this is going to be very interesting. But uh, actually, right. good job on the Allied players. Together, they managed to completely root out. The, uh, the the axis from yeah they had yeah. they had their sniper take out the machine guns one at a time force them to retreat and then the infantry just rushed in decapped that that uh, or dhq'd that building and he came in and basically completely forced the axis out so um, that was actually very successful overall meanwhile he's also fighting for the middle he's managed to get a foothold onto that uh, center victory point even if he hasn't taken it yet. And if you look in the south, that uh, machine gun that was placed in the um, in the, the pre-made bunker, again, you know, that's unique to this map to have one of those on it. Yeah. Um, did its job. It's really, it, it's, that's that's just a great position overall um, to have an MG, and it's, it's really hard to take out um, unless you have a sniper or the like. Uh, so we do have veterancy, and we have a 1.6 grenadier grenade go wow. off. Wow, um, that was a long distance too, you see that? Yeah, that, that that that's got, one of the advantages. Uh, the range got buffed as well as um, what was the other thing? The, the, uh, the area no, it was, yeah, it was the area effect. I don't think the damage got buffed, just the area effect, so it'll affect more player. Oh man! Oh no! The MP40 Volks rush in, completely decimate that squad. There goes the sniper. He's like, oh shit! Sniper's out of there. Yep. Yep. Unfortunately, Axis couldn't hold on to their uh, little strangle. But you know, I guess that they had. They had uh, gotten on, gotten going, um, but uh, I don't think it really. I think it did its job. I mean, they they certainly have secured the majority of this map, and they're now moving around that MG uh, to cover the flanks. Which, if they are able to decap that, that munitions right there, and the strat point, and then the strat point right above the munitions, um, well, they pretty much uh, knocked allies off of all the resources on the lower half of the map. Yeah. That's actually a pretty critical point there. If they just decap the strap point and above and below where they are right now, <clears throat> they're in uh, really good shape. But looks like we got, you know, two rifle squads and a sniper, and I think that's plenty to test here. Unsupported at this point by machine guns at all. There may be a counter snipe going on in the north. If that off and the other guy, uh, if uh, uh, Disgrace X stops moving, but. Uh, Oh man! Is there he is? Oh, didn't oh, wasn't paying attention quite in time. Sniper misfires. It's always interesting. Yeah, every once in a while. I mean, he's he's supposed to have a 100% chance, but every once in a while he doesn't get it. Yeah. Oh no! I don't think he realized there's another sniper up there. He wasn't paying attention. Now he probably sees it. Attack! Stop! Moving. No, don't move into his <laughs> line of sight. Oh man, this is like. Look, at he does that nice yeah. commando roll and actually gets the kill! Wow! That was impressive. Usually when you get that close, they have like 25% accuracy or something. Wow! Double bar, double veterancy rifleman now. And interestingly enough, the southern player built a weapon support center. The northern...
I thought the Northern player built the barracks. I guess not. That's a that's a smart choice if you see tier two and and uh, a lot of veterancy. It's it's pretty hard to just roll out with a Sherman and do what you used to do back in the day, especially yeah. with Shrek's having all the. Uh, we have. Uh, still, the allied the, the allied players up in the north here, managing to completely lock down this this northern approach to their base, which is good. They still haven't managed to really decap anything in the middle. They've been holding their own, it seems, but they haven't been able to decap anything in the middle. They've got a mortar here, I believe, was trying to take out the uh, machine gunner guarding the middle. They're still way down in points. 374 to 500. We have uh, two, the two half tracks, I think, that you're speaking of. <laughs> Basically, They're lined up. Greek barracks. Yeah. yeah. And first Sherman <laughs> out on the field in the north. Uh, yeah, this strategy. One guy is going to be countering. I, I don't think they're really expecting a tier two for long. Um, probably they're expecting a early, you know, tier two with uh, some Shreks, maybe a little bit of veterancy, and then a quick tech up to four. Um, maybe roll out with some heavier tanks. So um, I, I definitely think getting the Shermans uh, it was a good idea, and one person, you know, getting weapon support center in case you need uh, in case you need mach extra machine guns uh, is also. Uh, just a good safety net to have. The Axis have also managed to, uh, I don't know, did they force that machine gun out of the building? No machine gun's still there, but they did manage to uh, take much of the points that were in the south here, even decap the victory point in the south, which means they're getting, they're ticking down the victory points faster and faster. Here we go. Looks like the two half-tracks are on the move. Oh, and the sniper just ate it in the north, right by the well. Which sniper? The Allied sniper? The Allies and the machine gun's gone as well. And if that, that uh, squad of Grenadiers is upgrading Shreks, that Sherman has no chance against... Oh yeah, triple veterancy! Grenadiers! Wow! Here comes the double flamen warfare. <laughs> oh yep. man, this is, gonna, this is gonna be cute. Oh, but... Uh, oh no! His tank depot is almost completed, but it's not quite completed. Look at this. I don't know what the heck happened to his engineers. He must have had them leave by accident. And they're all dead! All the engineers are dead! He doesn't have... Oh, no. Are you so serious? Now... He did not complete his tank depot? Yeah, tank depot's at, like, 98%. Uh, that's really harsh. <laughs> it is. So now we see the weapon support center taking the brunt of this uh, attack. That's one of the things that... One of the problems that I have with the Flemingwerfer is, you see, they, they sometimes attack with only one of their flames. Sometimes they'll attack with both like that. And sometimes if you tell it to attack something on your right or something, for example, they simply, you know, attack with one like that and don't bother attacking with the other at the same time. I don't know. It just seems kind of weird to me. It also seems kind of weird. It, it can, yeah, I know what you're saying, but you can, uh, it'll, if there's units on the right and units oh, on the left, those can, guys were roasted. <laughs> it can hit uh, both at, at once. One thing to note about uh, flame damage is the, the further you are from the actual target as far as when in, in regards to buildings the more damage it'll do Ooh. Um, and he just I think he canceled it. it yeah yeah ouch this is gonna be hard to recover from yeah but here comes that Sherman it's been about time right he's like I'm calling for reinforcements where the hell's that Sherman <laughs> it would have been nice to have a you know a, a stug or something like that some some tier 3 tank accompanying this uh, it's pretty risky but um, I guess it paid off due to, to the due to the Allied player's mistake. Could have could have been. And he's a killed at least two button. engineers, I think, so far with those. So he's got a lot of man power recoup. Not to mention he forced him to stop that tank depot. There oh, goes yeah. a third Long. engineer. It was well worth its cost. Um, this is a lot of harassment. That uh, Sherman has to sit in the base. Can't be, you know, where where it needs to be, which is on the field. Let's see if uh, the Axis can hard press this little diversion. Um, haven't noticed much else action going on. Kind of been watching the uh, the roasting. <laughs> yeah, he's actually doing a pretty good job of keeping that uh, half track, you know, behind the buildings. He's trying to hide him from the Sherman. Now he's hiding again behind that building. Yeah, he really needs to get out of there. I'm not sure why he just doesn't retreat. I think it did its damage. It had its shock value. Well, I don't think it's going to be... I don't think it can outrun a Sherman. I think if it starts running, a Sherman's going to be able to get two or three shots off. Maybe when I, it was I still... the half-track is faster than the Sherman. Then oh, I think it is, too. Not. I don't think it's I don't think it's fast enough to pull away if the sh if it starts out with the Sherman trying to 
fire at it. I think it. maybe yeah, when sure. the Sherman was trapped in those buildings, it wouldn't be able to get out. I think then you're right. It might have been the time to retreat. <sighs> yep. Yeah, that was a. I guess it was worth it. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what do we have for income? Let's, let's, it's hard to really see on the map who's got the most income. I got 37 and 31 for munitions and fuel. Um, I got 33 and 25 for the Axis players. Okay, so a little. So the Allies are doing a little bit better right now. Why yeah, the heck think, is it 37? Do they have something... I don't see him having anything OP'd. Yeah. Enemy unit down. Don't ask me. That's a weird situation. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of new bug. It's it's the the Fleming Warfare has destroyed your tank depot bug that lowers your munitions by something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, there was a sniper munition exactly. a long time ago, but who knows? Hey, Brandon, wow, Rangers! You said armor and airborne. Sorry, my and bad. You laughed at infantry company. My bad. <laughs> 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 Looks like we have infantry something. With Thompsons. They did have Thompsons? Really powerful. Yeah. But they got pwned. Yeah. We, um, Unholy X is, has five CPs in reserve, so I'm um, not sure if he's really chosen anything yet. We might have Zeal and he just hasn't burned, but... Um, you did say double tear, but based upon your assessment of the situation, I don't know if that's what <laughs> That's what I read in the thread. Uh. Well, yeah. So, Axis is pretty much uh, cut off uh, from the plus five, the two plus five, uh, one plus five fuel and plus five munitions that they have. So, that's a, that's going to be a bad blow to their economy if they can't really yeah. get that linked up. I, I like the way Point to Hawk's playing out. It's not so much, a, uh, I mean, points matter. On this, it didn't used to matter so much in the past, um, but uh, now every little plus five really can make a can make a big difference. It adds up. Well, and looking at it again, is doing that job in the south, <coughs> and I uh, really uh, I really commend uh, the alley player that put that in there. Looking at it now, it's interesting because the plus five fuel that's on the allied side of that road next, just just north of the victory point in the middle, that plus five fuel is impossible for the Axis to get unless they get the plus 10 munitions at the bottom of the road or the strap point, because otherwise it's completely cut off from the Axis side. That seems kind of interesting from a design perspective, because there's nothing quite corresponding. I'm, I guess that plus 5 on the other side is the same deal. So, you know, I guess it's, it, it still looks pretty balanced to me overall. Well, I, th I think that the middle road shouldn't really be the, d the dividing line of the map. Um, there usually tends to be a lot more action on the eastern side of that road than on the western side. That's true. Unless you're doing harassment in the south like those uh, riflemen are doing, which they're about to get, uh, well, completely annihilated. Yeah, they had to get the hell out of there. I don't know what the point of taking that one strap point was. <laughs> it didn't seem to do much, but it did uh, distract the enemy. That's about it. We got a Sherman yep. popping out from the southern player. Now he rebuilt his tank depot. So we've got, wow, one, two, three Shermans for the northern player, one for the south against an AT gun and a Panzer IV. We do have a Panzer IV out. Cool. I'm gl glad to see some Tier IV. Uh, and a Panther is on the way. So, uh, and two Panzer commands, actually. Neat. Sorry. I, Here's suppression I love fire. Tier IV. It's so rare. Uh oh, what is this? Suppression fire and. Here comes the artillery. Oh my god! Oh, the mortar squad had no idea what hit him. Holy. Oh man! He blew up his own guys! Oh no, never mind. Sorry, that was the. Right, no. Excuse me. That was the, uh, the Axis player. Had his guys pinned. That was an excellent Howard Barrage. Wow. Wow. And you said it needs a buff. It does need a buff. It does. Well, yeah, you anything can hit a mortar squad. The mortar squad's not going to get out of there. And the other squad was pinned. Is that the <laughs> only situation where a freaking howitzer is ever useful? <laughs> well, we do have two Shermans with the uh, the uh, machine gunner on top, and that's going to give them definitely the edge, I think, that they need against uh, all those grenadier squads or yeah. former grenadier squads because there doesn't seem to be too many on the field right now. So, uh, but dear God, level three vet flamer pioneers always a favorite 
favorite uh, combination of mine. Yeah, wait, why do we only see... Oh, that's the other player only has single vet grenadiers. Okay. Oh, yep. man, get that guy out of there. There's one guy left. Run! Retreat! You can't fight four Thompsons on your own! Oh, no! Even the triple veterans, he dies to two rifle squads and a, t and a ranger squad. <laughs> Ouch. I definitely think the allies have been a little bit a little bit better with their their infantry usage yeah. and setbacks. And here comes the Panther trying to actually do something uh, against the infantry, which is it needs double kind of it needs double vet upgrade to do anything against infantry. Yeah. But watch that bazooka do nothing. Here comes a rear shot. Let's see if it does anything. No, no, it doesn't even get to do a rear shot because <laughs> the the tank drives out of range. Hey, Hans, did something scratch the paint? Let's go get a new paint job. Oh, Tiger Ace in. Here it comes. Unholy X called in a Tiger Ace. Bringing the Panzer IV yep. down to support it. Tiger Ace and Panther and Panzer IV is a pretty winning combination here. Especially yeah, if they can bring down some Grenadiers and or uh, Volks to support it. It's really rare to see Terror uh, being used. I know that some people still use it, but... Blitz has become such a mainstay that uh, you really don't see Tiger Aces around, especially because Ooh. people are now actually getting better. See, and now we have a Pershing rolling in, which is uh, the best thing you can possibly have right now to counter that Tiger Ace. And oh yeah, it's backed up like you short said, of two AT guns <laughs> and a pan two Panzer IVs and three pi four Pioneers are able to repair it. Wow, that's a that's a lethal push right there. Wow, ours. yeah. He's right to just keep retreating that pan that, that uh Oh man, good night to the MG squad. We've got bars that not gonna be able to use those stickies. We have field repairs going on. There it is. Uh oh, uh oh! Uh oh, move your guys! GTFO, don't back them up, you're backing up into the Oh man. That was a pretty harsh blow. Yeah. Well at least it's a forced retreat. Oh no god, it's don't drive right into it. Yeah, seriously. Ah. Oh, no! Pershing got hit, too. Ouch! Oh, double howitzer shots on the Pershing. Oh, oh that God. was... Oh, dear God. Wow! Oh, this devastating that? humanity! Two Panzer IVs down. Pershing gets hit three times by his own by the guy's own howitzer. No, it's, it's his teammate's howitzer. He's screaming on the mic, Why did you run to Pershing? I tried to die artillery! <laughs> Yeah, Here comes the Panther and Tiger in reserve, which is good to have in reserve. He's got his most powerful units are still the ones on the field here. I gotta give Unholy X props. The man knows how to use salvage. Oh yeah. You know, look, look to the left of the battle. He salvaged nice. the Panther before. That's uh, exactly Very what good. he was intended for. And good usage there. A lot of people don't remember to do that. It's so important as an Axis player, depending on munitions. If you can get that salvage, it can really make a difference. Now, this is where Airborne really comes in handy, being able to just drop an AT gun to support the Shermans. It seemed like uh, the Allies had this pretty much locked down up until the Tiger Ace rolled out, so... Uh, this is still a pretty contested game. We have a Croc actually rolling around the south, just flying up there. But uh, the Axis player does not know when to retreat. He had two Shermans up gun plus a Pershing firing at his Panther. He couldn't get out of there fast enough. He actually didn't move it. I think he didn't notice how much was shooting at it until it was too late. But let's look at the victory points here. Still, the allied player is in bad shape. The Axis just have to recap these points now that they've, you know, taken some territory. So uh, AT guns move up a little bit too and get participate in the battle. Yep, I would really really just pull that tiger yeah. out of there until a second until the second tiger ace comes up right now double terror not seen that, that since. I don't think ever I think it's pretty much was always blitz and terror usually it's the safest bet you get the firestorm if needed there it is the firestorm ace. coming down on the engineers got one of them and you get the you would have uh, the three tiger advantage as opposed to just two aces so Oh, look at that. Rangers right behind the Tiger. They're actually doing a little bit because they're at, you know, point-blank range. 
If there was any infantry to support this tiger, these Axis players would be doing really well. Oh, wow! Oh, no! I can't believe it! Rangers kill the Tiger Ace! Rangers kill the Tiger Ace! And he's retreating! He's got two bars of veteran C! Is he gonna get out of there? He's got no health! Running right past the entire German army! It's the one guy! He's gonna get back! I kill the Tiger Ace! Yeah! I can't believe it. Wow! The hero returns home for a welcome party. <laughs> yeah, right? Holy crap! That's, uh, Tales of Heroes first, I believe. But now, the Tiger Ace is in trouble. Two upgun Shermans and a, and a Pershing. Where, what happened to all the, the, the Panzer Shreks? Did we lose all those earlier in the battle? Oh no, Crunch Crunch! By th oh man, Sherman ran right over two Grenadiers. I, I think that needs a nerf, Bridger. Cl clearly, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> Why the hell didn't they just get out of the way? Clearly, they had plenty of happen. time. They didn't have any orders. They were just standing there, and they got run over. Anyways, but uh, good usage of packs. Um, that's that really turned that little engagement around. Not oh, sure the, oh yeah, there's the pack. Wow, I didn't see that. Yeah, that's just mass carnage going around. Uh, that's a lot of dead tanks. Yeah. Wow. That's so a lot. Of oh! We're at 200 points. One shot at a rifle squad. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, Tiger Ace is bad. I love seeing those things. It's been too long. Uh, Croc doing its... Ooh! Uh, Croc's Croc doing at level 2 veterans, you get 25% more damage, and that's really where they become lethal. Pretty much instantly getting rid of that AT and more. Uh-oh. Versus a Pershing. Second one coming up. Can the first one survive long enough? He's hitting the rear of the Persh just be. Definitely now we got two of, tigers. Uh, definitely the lack of infantry is, is, is hurting Axis. If they would have been able to keep alive their uh, earlier Grenadier squad. Yeah, we got one here. Nice! Own the Sherman. These two tiger races are now the most powerful things on this field, I think. We got the one, two Pershings. Oh, wow, I didn't realize he had uh, the other one survive the last encounter. So, no, this is actually pretty close. I hate to tell you, Bridger, they're pretty much the only thing in the field right now. We got uh, about three, two squads of Grenadiers, a Pioneer, two Pioneers. That's really all. Yeah. Maybe, you know. So it's been pretty costly on both sides. I mean, the Allies aren't really fielding too much either right now. Uh oh, let's watch this. Watch this. We have one. Oh, second one missed. Can they get it off in time? Let's hope. Well, They're actually surviving see. pretty well. I think that they croc definitely the nerf. I mean, yeah, it, up 5%. First 5% of the game. Nice. Couldn't save it, though. Yeah, because it already had the main gun destroyed, so at that point it wasn't doing too much damage. Repairing both the Tiger races, that's always good. <clears throat> they really could. They, they really need those Panda Treks, and now that they got them, I think they got a good chance. And they had uh, this entire time... The victory points, they managed to take the southern and the middle one while that battle was going on. Allies just now retaking the north and the middle. And the map is pretty much polarized. Yeah. We got a long, well, not a long ways, but we got quite a ways to go. I don't think this is quite in the bag for either side yet. Uh, certainly the VP disadvantage uh, for the Allies, right? Because we yeah. switched. Yeah, Allies are at 107, Axis at 362, so the Allies are pretty close. That was yeah, a pretty that, good that, try by the Axis, but oh, they lost a Panzer Shrek. That's going to hurt them. Yeah, that definitely puts the, the lack of VPs. Um, when you get under 200, you know, your your mind starts working a little differently. You know the pressure's on. You know you got to hold your ground and uh, or be overly aggressive at certain points when you, when you wouldn't want to. So uh, they're definitely in, in a bigger bind than the Axis is. And if they can just play it a little more conservatively... Um, and, and force the allies to make you know mistakes based on being low on VPs, and they can certainly pull away from the w with the win. All right, let's see. Uh oh, uh oh, this is gonna change it. Howitzer, get back, get back. All right, they're moving, they're moving. That last tiger race needs to move though. It doesn't have any support left. I think he's. As oh long as no! He drive oh both no! Of his Pershings into there. I'll be happy. There we go. But he did. No, he should no have offense. now at this point. He should have driven one of them into it, and he's going to. He's going to. 
He's hoping for that Firestorm to kill off the Pershing. He's got Allied War Machine on there. It does! I can't believe it! Firestorm kills a Pershing when it's got Allied War Machine. Oh, no. When he got did he have Allied War Machine or Field Repairs? No, he had Allied War Machine on there. Uh. The Firestorm finished off the Pershing. I can't believe it. I would have been even better if he drove into his, 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 uh, his teammate's um, howitzer barrage How to get a new Pershing. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to change. Freaking overpowered Allied War Machine. Not because of what happened right there, but just because in general. Yeah. 45 seconds, my ass. All right. <laughs> well, there's enough uh, tank wrecks in the, well, middle of the map. What is that? A Tiger Ace, a Pershing. What, two Shermans, or is that a Panzer Panzer IV? We got it. Still got the Panzer IV wreck, although that the one's been salvaged. If we could get a, maybe make a, a push down there, um, that could give them a lot of resources for you know, basically firestorm for each of them, probably a free one, easy, and uh, that that could allow them to you know push uh, the Allied players all the way back to their base if they made a, a hard push to the center. But uh, we have an off map combat group. Two M two M eights, an M ten, and an MG. That's not bad. That's not bad. Because they got the M ten. That's not bad. <laughs> oh man, this is not good. You got an unsupported infantry push here against the middle, guarded by uh, with, with inspired assault on, mind you. So we'll see. and it is only equipped with the bazooka. Dear God. Oh Save no, it. that is. It's a bazooka. That's not a Panzer Shrek. Oh. That could have been a that could have been a kill if it was a Panzer Shrek, damn it! But he's oh, getting yeah, that Sherman out of there. He's gonna he's gonna try. No, I thought he's gonna sacrifice the squad to kill that Sherman. That probably would have been a good trade if he could have done it. We got uh oh, a huge what is the heck is this person? Where's where was the tiger going? What is this? this isn't this isn't your Sunday stroll? I, you can't just climb a mountain and just decide to just fly around somewhere. I think he's just trying to finish off that Sherman, but... Uh, Fair enough, but look, he's got so low on health. Oh! He, the Pioneers couldn't get to him in time. Yeah, that wasn't necessarily worth it. If uh, the Allies' munition income is, is good right now, they can lay a lot of mines. Uh, <clears throat> and that looks like exactly what they're, what they're doing by the VP. So they'll have a, a little bit of an ability to hold that... Uh, just because that mine will be, you know, instantly pin anything. And right now, this northern battle is going very bad for the Axis. They should be pulling out right now. They We've should got be dropping a firestorm right now. That's four engineers. There's a four, three engineer squads yeah. right there. Three engineers. There That's it is! Nice call. Let's see if they can get out of there. They're not going to hit the retreat button. They're staying. They're in trouble. There they go. Oh, uh, that that's a that's a big loss right there. Yeah, they All actually killed the M10 power. too. And another Pershing on the uh, Panther on the field. Wow, I didn't see the yeah, second the, one. <clears throat> the Panther actually ran over the mine, but it uh, luckily didn't get a damaged engine. I'm not sure why. Oh that no! Was guaranteed. Calliope for the win. They finally got the Panzer Shreks on the Grenadiers, and the Calliope kills them both. Oh no. He's got to get repair going on on, on these uh, tanks, though. Look at this. No, 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 no. Do not. Oh, killing me now. Ten. Ten units. Ten percent left on your Tiger and your Panther. Let's go charging into two full health Pershings. I think that's a great idea. Oh, man. You're killing me. What time are you at? 36-14. <laughs> okay, good. He just lost one of his Panthers. He charged it in, right? He's, he's finally repairing his stuff, but... That was bad. They're, they're... Counting down. 107 on these... Allies, I think, got this one in the bag now. They're, they're repairing uh, the Pershings. Calliope is sitting in reserve. Sherman Gun is back online. They've got huge amounts of resources guarding the center. Yeah, this was a nice, nice comeback from uh, from the Allies. I, I I don't know if they've won this, but it 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 sure looks like that to me, especially with the amount of time left. Um, I don't know, dual tear, yay or nay? Uh, I think it wasn't necessarily terror that was the issue. I think it was the the fact that they that the Axis players. It, I mean, if they win this game, then correct. I might stand may stand corrected, but. 
I just don't think they were able to hold on to their infantry squads quite as good as the um, as the Allied players were. Certainly having you know a Panzer Shrek or two to back up, you know Tiger Ace and and Panthers is is really powerful. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I th I think also they're continually just butt heads with those Pershings at the top. Probably wasn't the best idea. I mean they were actually doing they were winning until those howitzers came down and they had to uh, retreat everything. And then, uh, well, actually, it was the Allied War Machine that got, you know, the other Pershing to pop in that really changed that northern battle. That was the critical battle. The Axis was winning. They had that Pershing down very low. Then comes down the howitzer. The Allied War Machine pops on. They have to retreat. They get a free Pershing and uh, their Tiger is in, you know, all their Tigers are in bad shape. Yeah, I think Unholy X is a little bit tired right now. Um, unless he's saving up for a Tiger Ace, which I think he is. Um, he has uh, a 1,000 thousand manpower, and we have the V1 unlocked. So let's make this a true finish. And may I please see a V1? Just, a V1 on an Allied War Machine, two Pershings. Let's see it. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see that. He, he leaves his Pershings right where they are. Here's the V1 coming in. Hits the Allied War Machine right as it comes in. That would be amazing. Yeah. Well, he's about 14 munitions shy. I'm not sure what uh, Disgrace X is at, but uh, he definitely could drop a V1 just at the very end to make this a sensation. Yeah, 36 finish. victory points. Because they have all three, it's draining real quick. Yep. This is something they could have done, you know, 10 minutes ago. Because the middle was held mostly by infantry and a couple of tanks, but if they had pushed through with a Tiger and a Panther, they could have overrun this position pretty easily with infantry support. Definitely. Rangers, yay or nay? Hmm. Uh, I think no. they did their job. I mean, they took out a Tiger But still race. not worth 400 manpower. Well, free bazookas, uh, but... <laughs> and that's not saying much. Is, has always been debated. All right, we got not like three seconds left. Uh, yep. Oh Look wow. at this carnage. This is ridiculous. Here comes the Allied train of overpowered, not overpowered, but <laughs> the Allied train of heavy heavy weapons. You got a Pershing, a Sherman, a Pershing, and a Calliope ready to About barrage. To barrage and yeah. Barrage. <laughs> oh no, finishing yeah. a barrage well, up at the north there. Oh, you can see the rockets in flight. It would have been nice to see a V1, but uh, oh well. I don't Look think it would have made any this tactical. This is difference. overpowered. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I zoomed in on a rocket. Uh, so, what would you pay for a, a Ranger squad? What would to I make pay it cost for, effective? I, I would pay. I, I don't How much know manpower? I'm paying 400. To you be don't? Honest. Then why don't you use no. Infantry Company then? Uh, maybe because I do use Infantry Company. Damn it. You didn't get me there. I'm one of those guys that doesn't uh, doesn't mind using crazy strategies. No, I know, um, but does it work? Is it as effective as you know stormtroopers? I don't know. It, well, you can't really compare the two. I mean, fire. Well, I always preferred infantry company for a couple reasons over over airborne, and maybe even more so now. Um, well, you start on the left side, you know, you get fast deployment, which means that all your stuff comes out so much quicker, so it's a lot easier to overrun um, Axis. Um, you also have, you know, free bazookas, plus they come with fire up, and they're a lot cheaper to reinforce than paras, although they're not as expensive as recoilless, um, sorry, as, 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 ah. Free bazookas, cheaper to reinforce versus paras which are like impossible to maintain you have to upgrade for 125 munitions recoilless rifles which yes they're better than bazookas but for 100 munitions you can get thompson's and all right uh, with, all right all right this is a this is yes. another show entirely <laughs> We're yes, gonna have but some... uh i i think i was always a big fan of infantry company even way back in 1.2 with just rifle ranger spam and i use it every once in a while would i you know use it for every game no, but if if it fit, you know, and, and the time came where I was like, you know what, this is probably a good, I, I need fire up and I don't want to go airborne, um, I, I use Infantry Company. It's good against defense doctrine as well, so um, it has its uses. Fair enough, is fair enough. All right, let's, let's combat finish, group finishing, useful? Well, no, so GG. All right, anyways. Finishing thoughts on the, uh, on the game here tonight. I thought it was uh, quite exciting. Certainly good to see uh, a good 2v2 
it may not have been, you know, super perfect expert micro, uh, but I thought it was, you know, fairly good play by both sides. I think it was definitely good play by both sides. Anytime I see salvage, I'm oh, yeah. happy. Double terror was just the icing on the cake. And very me. nice uh, drops for artillery. It was all almost always well timed. Yep. Um, uh, final comments. Well, I don't know. I think it was well played by both sides, really. Um, maybe a little bit of extra harassment in the south uh, to flush out that machine gun with the Flamen Warfers. Uh, definitely would have been a smart, smarter choice, I think, than the double base rush. But um, I think the Flamen were pretty good. Good, but uh, they definitely could have got out of there in time. I think that was also um, a, a, no real. Harassment in the south of the of the bottom VP. I mean, the Allies even had time to barb wire the whole thing off. Um, so, uh, so as point to Hawk, my question to you is: It still tank spam a la mode, or is it just? I don't think it is. I just think a lot. They they both did very good jobs keeping pioneers and engineers available to instantly repair tanks, even repair tanks in battle. Look, you got three, four engineers here on the Allied side. Um, for the northern player alone, ready to just come in and repair these tanks when needed. And the Axis player I know had two or three that were just sitting around waiting, and as soon as they could, they repaired a vehicle or they salvaged. I think that was very, very good use on both sides for that. Yeah, definitely. We see so many tanks because they, they were so good at keeping them alive, basically. Definitely. Yeah, and the repair usage on both sides was, was some of the best that I've seen, so... Um, wasn't an, quite enough for the Axis to pull out the win overall, but uh, double tear, it's its pretty hard to win with uh, just two Tigers, especially with yeah. you know all, yeah. the whole a allied army basically coming at you. So um, good, well played, and uh, we even had a little bit of vehicle vehicle veterancy as well as yeah. infantry veterancy, so Vinsby's happy. Absolutely. <laughs> we both got happy. I always be, I always complain about people not repairing their tanks, and you always complain about vehicles. These guys are awesome. They are our Tales of Heroes, Heroes of the Week, as it were. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Another video replay review is in the out pile. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Send us your replays, tales up at tsncentral.com. Send us any feedback you have on the show, tales up at tsncentral.com. Also, uh, check out this week's awesome show, uh, video show. We discussed our, continuing to discuss our thoughts about 1.6, the patch itself. And uh, so I'll get to play some more this week. I'll have some more thoughts about it next week. Of course, you can always find thoughts from Vittensby and myself on the forums all over the place. And uh, Tales of Heroes. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to stop rattling. Bye. The Team Sportscast Network. This broadcast is copyrighted 2006 by the Team Sportscast Network. Any copying, reproduction, redistribution, modification, rebroadcasting of any kind or any manner is expressly prohibited without the written permission of the Team Sportscast Network, LLC.